Well, that's like the stereotype of BMW drivers is that they're jerks. Yeah. The stereotype of Tesla drivers are that, I don't know, what is the stereotype of Tesla drivers? They eat quinoa and wear non-prescription glasses? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, They're hipsters. What even is quinoa? My parents pronounced it quinoa. That is wrong. We'll start by saying this is take two with the Tesla Model 3. Yeah, unfortunately. We done goofed with the cameras the first time. And the audio. And the audio. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we really screwed the, the first one up quite a, quite a bit. In our defense, it was our very first time trying to shoot inside a car. Yeah, maybe we'll release a blooper reel. Yeah, maybe. So what you're watching in these videos is very much so like average people yeah. driving some crazy cars that we never thought we would be able to for any of our lives. So. Yeah, so well, we might throw some horsepower numbers and stuff like that at you, but we're not going to delve into like the engineering of the car and stuff like that most of the time. Yeah, we're just regular dudes yeah. who are driving cars. If you want to watch <laughs> us kind of talk about cars in a meme way, here you go. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Grand Test Auto. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Man, I love that. It just grabs you. I know, it really just throws you and back in the seat. 60. Ooh, boy. All right. You don't go very far no. before you hit 60. I was thinking before we ever drove this that I would miss the sound of a gasoline engine. Yeah. But in this, you do hear that whine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a decent replacement. It's still not the same exactly, but it's not bad. Oh, I totally agree. The first time I got in this, I was like, ah, here we go. This is going to be soulless and boring and bleh and clinical. And I, it's not that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You can see this car in two ways. You can see it, yes, as a car and a means of transportation, but it's also a piece of tech. Yep. This is very much the car for somebody who loves smartphones and tablets and all the newest technology. Any Apple fanboy, oh, yeah. I feel like, would love this car. I mean, Tesla kind of is like the Apple of the car Absolutely. world, I feel like. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple bought Tesla at some point. I've heard rumors. Yep. The interior is very uh, Spartan. It's it's minimalist. pretty. It's very minimalist. Yeah. Yes, and uh, some people hate that. I know, like I've watched a lot of reviews of this car. Yeah. Where people bash on the interior. This is fifty thousand dollars. You could definitely get a Mercedes or an Audi. Similar for, price. Similar price that inarguably have better interiors, more luxurious interiors than this. Yeah. I don't mind how Spartan it is in here. Yeah, I don't. I think it's, it looks kind of it, like an Ikea room. It, it, that's a good analogy. Yeah. I've never thought about that before. It because does. The materials aren't the highest quality. It's pretty plasticky, but it, it looks, it looks nice. modern. It looks clean. I, like, I yeah. do like that, that it looks clean and it looks sleek. The storage in this car is pretty decent. Yeah. That section in the front does get pretty warm. That's yeah. the only thing. So you might not want to keep things Milk like or ice cream. Ice cream, yeah. yeah. Dairy stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's still like a extra storage space. So you've got that and you've got the hood. Or not the hood. I was, gonna, I was wondering what you're talking about. I don't about. know what I'm talking the about. The trunk? I'm crazy. The trunk. Yeah. yeah. You, have the, you have the hood and you have the <laughs> trunk. And I can fit in the trunk. And JC can fit in the trunk. We tested that last time. Yep. The steering is very, very precise. Like one of the most precise in any car I've ever driven. This feels like some of the higher end sports cars we've driven. Yeah. And this is like half the price of those cars. That is really nice. Now we do have to mention that you were in sport mode because oh, you can adjust the steering to different modes. Yeah. So let's see, if we go into driving here and then you go to this section, you've got acceleration, chill and standard. We've got it in standard. And then steering mode, you've got three options. You've got comfort, standard, and sport. And so each of those is just gonna stiffen it up a little bit more. So sport is gonna be the tightest steering. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got regenerative braking, which we have on low. There's also standard. I'm not a fan of the regenerative braking. I'm not either, I hate it. Basically, when you have regenerative braking on, what it feels like and why I hate it so much, when you release your foot off the gas, which isn't the gas, but it's- The go-go pedal. The go-go, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the go-go pedal. When you take your foot off of that, the car just comes to a halt. Even when you don't 
hit the brake pedal, yeah. um, the car just like, it just like really slows down. Yeah. And, and I know a lot weird. of people drive almost exclusively using regenerative braking and not having to brake very often and they get used to it and it's kind of cool. And I'm sure it's something that we would get used to, but right now, man, I don't enjoy it. I do like that they give you the option to turn it to low, at least. Yes, which leads us into this point, is the yeah. central control panel. Yes. It gives you control over everything in the car. Everything is all handled on this one big iPad-looking thing yeah, it, in it the center. Yeah, it looks just like the top portion of a MacBook Pro. It's, yeah. It's ridiculous. It and looks great. I find it weird looking over and looking at your speed and all your controls and stuff over yes. here. And it's also unusual. Um, I know you would get used to this, but you don't have a tachometer, and so you can't see anything because you don't have any engine yeah. revs or RPMs or anything. So you don't hear any response, really, besides yeah. the whine. You don't see any needles jumping around. So You just have the speed going up and down. Yeah, and it's really hard to gauge how fast you're going in this car. Because oh, yeah. You can go over the speed limit, which we're definitely not doing. And, and we would, definitely haven't ever done. Never. And you wouldn't know. It. That's the thing. <laughs> Backup camera backup is camera. dope. I love it. It's so huge. It's the greatest backup camera I've ever seen. It's yeah. I think it is. I would agree with that. It's the greatest backup camera in any car we've driven so far. Yeah. Resolution is awesome. It has trajectory lines to show you how your car is going to turn. And it's huge. That's what I love about it. It's it enormous. covers almost the whole iPad thing in the middle. Yeah. It's really nice. We've definitely driven other cars that uh, have displays or dashes that feel behind technologically. Yeah, this doesn't behind. at all. This is this is class leading. What's also interesting is uh, you can put parental controls on this that car. Is, yeah, I this like is like that. the only car I've ever heard of that you can put parental controls on. And what that means is you can um, like artificially uh, limit the speed, the top speed yep. that anybody can go. So if you want to get this for a family and you have kids who are driving, uh, you can, when they get in the car, you can limit uh, how fast they go. You can limit it to like 70 or 80. You're capped off at 30, sport. Yeah, or if you really <laughs> want to be a jerk about it, yeah, you can totally just... Uh, That's great. It makes it a perfect family car because you're, whatever, the dad can take it to work and back and then... Have fun. And have fun with it and then... Limit his kids. Yeah, Junior wants to take it to the movies and you can keep it to whatever, 65. So you can also keep track of how fast people go in this, correct? Yes, yeah, with the app on your phone. So you can download the Tesla app with any Tesla, including this, the Model 3. So if you drop this off with a valet attendant and the valet or your kid or whoever is driving this like a maniac, yeah. it'll give you updates on your phone of how quickly they're accelerating and how quickly they're driving, how fast they're driving on the road. That's evil. And uh, when I used to work for a valet company, uh, we had a valet attendant who accelerated a little too quick and got up to 95 miles an hour Jeez. on the freeway, I believe, and the customer had all of that on his phone because oh, no. the car sent that to him and uh, he reported that to, uh, to corporate and they fired that valet attendant. Wow. Yep. Oh, that was <laughs> that was blind spot. Detection. That was interesting. That scared me. That's cool. That's something that we haven't we didn't hear the first time. No, I jumped. That literally <laughs> made me jump. I was so scared from that. Get spooked. Okay, so what that was, we drove by a car a little too closely. Yeah. And it started beeping an alarm that it was in my blind spot. That's funny. The car just starts yelling at you. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that on the highway. Yeah. That I, could be I don't know what I think about that. That was because that literally made me jump. I was scared. Yeah, I guess if you know it's a feature, it's not so bad. But yeah. we didn't know that was coming, so a little alarming. You also have on the display, it's really cool. It shows where you are in your lane, but it also mm -hmm. shows uh, obstructions in the road. So it'll show you cars going by, like little ghost yeah, images I, of cars. Yeah, I do, I do like that. That is really cool. That's something that other cars don't do. And also, like, I've heard Elon in uh, interviews explain Tesla's decision to put this here, and it's because uh, eventually the plan is to have Model 3s be autonomous and yeah. be able to drive themselves. So right now, yes, you're having to look over and look over at your speed and all your other information because you're driving this yourself, but in the future, what's the word? It's more convenient when it's self-driving to have that here in the center versus here on the dash. That's definitely true. Also, another thing with the navigation, uh, if you put in a destination on your GPS through the tablet, 
it's going to pull up supercharger stations along the oh, route. Oh, yeah. Which is really cool because taking this on a road trip would have been such a pain because you'd have, to, yeah, you'd have yeah. to plan, all right, where's their supercharger station? You have to look it up, plot it on your route, but now it just does it for you. So mm -hmm. you can stop and charge. Stopping and charging, however, is still a pain. We got some footage of charging this thing in the, the last time we reviewed it, and it was doing, I wanna say it was doing a mile every five or 10 seconds. I think that's accurate. And we were half, our tank was about half full, our tank, our battery, battery. was about half full, and it was gonna take like 40 minutes to get to full, I think. Okay. Which is... Yeah, that sounds about right. It's long, I mean, if it's on a long. road trip, you you get one stop for lunch, and yeah. you better charge up then, because well, you don't wanna sit for The problem minutes. is, if you're going on long road trips, right, so like, it would suck even worse in a electric car because every couple hundred, every 200, 250 miles, you're having to stop for 40 minutes yeah. or so to charge. And that's, that gets old. That, that's from half charge. Yeah. So, man. That being said, I think this car for daily driving is super convenient. Oh yeah. Because you can just plug it in at home like it's a cell phone. And it's so much cheaper than buying and, gas. Yeah, it's so much cheaper than gas. And uh, you don't have to worry about waking up early, trying to take it to a gas station if you're going to work and yeah. maybe you didn't fill up unless you forgot to charge it in. Like maybe you forgot to charge your phone overnight. That yeah. would really suck. But you get in the in the habit of plugging it in at night right. just like you do all like your you other do all your devices. other stuff. Yeah. And then you're good to go. So yeah. you never have to, to worry about taking it to charge anywhere. And if, if you're just commuting, I don't know, 30 minutes to work and 30 minutes back, mm -hmm. you're good. I think we're probably ready to rate this thing. I'd say, think you're ready? yeah, yeah. I think I think I'm ready to rate it. We rate out of total 60 points. Uh -huh. so and there are six categories. There are six categories. The categories are performance, practicality, value, mm -hmm. cool factor, quality, and fun factor. Okay, performance. This is above average. Yeah, it's nothing too fast it's or too crazy. It's not a sports yeah. car. It's not super high performance. Right. But it's a a great handling town enough. car. I would give it like... 5.5? I give it a 6. Okay. I feel like... Yeah, 5.5 for me. So, uh, then moving on to practicality, uh, which I think is high. I would agree until you try to take it on a road trip. That's, yes. But factoring in the extra storage space you have without an engine is good. Factoring in also how cheap it is to run. You don't need to do maintenance on this car, really. Like, you do a little bit, but you don't need to do oil changes, obviously, yeah. because you don't have an engine. So I'm gonna give this thing a seven and a half. I was thinking the same thing, actually, a 7.5. And that leads us to value. This one is $49,000, and we haven't talked about the federal EV credits and state EV credits yet, which do help the price of this. Yeah. Right now, there's a federal incentive that cuts $7,500 effectively off the price of the car, it takes it off your taxes, mm -hmm. compared to similarly priced cars. This is a good value, in my opinion. Right now, I don't know how much this is going to depreciate in the future, so without factoring that in, I'd say the value's probably a seven, honestly, I think, I for think me. that's fair. Um, my only concern is, like you're saying, the depreciation. You get a new smartphone every year. As, right. As the tech evolves in this car, I mean, every, this is one pre-built package. And like Tesla that. does uh, give software updates to the car. Over the air, yeah. Which is nice. Uh, we haven't actually mentioned that before either. Uh, it's like a phone, it's like Apple does yeah. uh, with iOS updates. Yeah. Um, this is like the only car that gets, like I feel like, that gets updates. Yeah, you can just press update on your car and yeah, you've got new features, which that's is cool. so cool. And that helps with the value too. You know what, yeah. Th this I, has long-term reliability based on that, I, I, agree. I feel I'm like. I'm gonna give it a seven then as well. And that leads us next to Cool Factor. As of right now, this is still a pretty uncommon car. So people will stop and look at it and they'll Especially think Especially cool. Tesla enthusiasts. Yeah, definitely. And, but the Cool Factor is gonna go down in the next few years. Yeah. This is going to dwindle. Common. As of right now, if I had to rate it right now, what its Cool Factor would be? Five and a half? I was thinking of a six, but I think I'll actually go with a five and a half too. Yeah. Uh, quality. I will knock it a little bit because the interior quality in this definitely does not compare with any of its rivals. Yeah. You can hide a lot behind the minimalist design Minimalist scheme. design. Yeah. 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 You can excuse yourself 
for, for making certain choices by saying, oh, it's just minimalist. Mm -hmm. so I would say the quality is a four, personally. That's pretty low. That's pretty low, I know. I, I'm gonna give it a little bit higher than that because it does, I like the seats, I like the interior. I, I do like it. It is plasticky. But and it I, is, I know. I'd be concerned that this would start rattling at some point and I hate it when things rattle. But I'm gonna give it a five because okay. I do, despite the fact that it, it is cheaply made it doesn't look that cheaply made it just feels it it just yeah i'd agree with that all right and then that leads us to the final which is fun factor which i think is good yeah i, I think i think it's pretty high in this when you hit the go-go pedal yes it like that Ooh. it really quickly just throws yeah. you back in your seat and that's a fun feeling and it doesn't get old even though you get used to it it doesn't get boring I'd give the fun factor a seven. I don't want to give it the same score as you, but I think I'm going to give it a seven too. Really, man, okay. I know. We have given almost identical scores on almost everything it's here. Because I'm such a sucker for luxury too. <laughs> if, if, if a car is comfortable and kind of fast, it's perfect. So the only two things we've differed on was performance, which was a difference of 0.5, yep. and quality, which was a difference of one. That's not much it's at the all. The only two things we've differed on opinion on. <laughs> The right. grand total is. So the grand total is 37.25. Out of 60. Out of 60. That's pretty high. Which is pretty high. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I think we still rated okay. this pretty high, but I think it deserves a high score. It does. Based it's a on good that it's, car. Yeah, it's a good all around car. Like this is the one that at the end of the day, I didn't want to give it back. Mm -hmm. You'll have to see what we rate the other cars that are coming up in the next episodes, but uh, this is a good one. Yeah, it's definitely a good uh, good car to set the bar. Yeah. And a good car to compare other stuff to. The all around good of this is a good comparison to anything it's else. It's a benchmark, yeah. I feel like, yeah. All right, so if this is your first episode, welcome to the show. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode. We've got some cool cars on the way. Yep, see you next time. What the heck is that? Come on. Ow. Okay, that's not moving. Get right here. A little more. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, um, there's something wrong with this engine. There's something stuck in there. I, yeah, I can't, is there? Can you look right there? Oh, He's, no, no, you're right. Yeah, no, I see there's something weird. Here, help me with this, what? okay? What? I'm gonna pull here. You grab this. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Uh, on three. Uh, okay. One, two, three. <laughs> ah, it was Curiosity Stream. <laughs> Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for Grand Test Auto fans, you can get your first month free by following the link below. Curiosity Stream is available on just about every platform, so you'll always have access to the best nonfiction content. Sign up for your free trial by visiting curiositystream.com slash GTA.